along. Are you ready for the big star of the evening? Uh, yeah, because you know I'm a huge baseball fan, huge pitching fan, and I'm a football fan, so <laughs> I'm getting it all in one guest. You're getting it all in one guest. So let's welcome to the air, everybody, Mr. Josh Booty. Josh, welcome to Totally Driven Radio. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing wonderful, guys. Thanks for having me on the show tonight. I'm sitting here in traffic in Dallas, Texas, so I'm a good bit away from you guys. Dallas, Texas. Now, you know, we're in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia and Dallas is like utter enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. That's the, the NFC. But, but you know what's funny about that, Bay? That's only a one-way street. The Dallas fans don't have the anger that the Philadelphia fans have which I, I always thought was funny because uh, I get a lot of guys from my work at Dallas that are like, yeah, we really don't even consider Philadelphia uh, a rival. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, shoot, Philly, you know, with, with the new coach coming in town from Oregon, Kelly, he is gonna he's going to light up the scoreboards. I hope that he does. I, I'm not a Cowboy fan, so I'll, uh, I, I, I love what's happening in Washington with, with RG3 and what they're doing on offense, and I, I think Kelly's going to bring another level of fun to uh, the Philadelphia area, that's for sure. I know everybody's pumped there. Yeah, I'll tell you what. As a matter of fact, he had his first mini camp uh, yesterday that started, and um, they had the tight end Brent Selick on the news afterwards. They were interviewing him. And he had a smile on his face like a little kid that you just haven't seen anybody on the Eagles have in a long time. So you can see there's definitely some excitement going on with this team right now. (laughs) <laughs> That's what I, I saw uh, a special on ESPN, and they were talking about just the, uh, all the positives that he's bringing to the table and the excitement, and it's got to be fun. It's a new chapter for the Eagles, and I'm telling you, he's going to do a good job. I, I really think the, that offense is kind of the next big thing in the NFL, and we saw it last year in Seattle with what Pete Carroll and them were doing, and we saw it in, in Washington with uh, Shanahan and RG3 again. So. What he brings to the table is going to be similar to what we've seen, and uh, you know, with those other two teams, and man, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to make that division even funner, and and, and you know, a better division. Well, let's talk, let's talk about you because I I look over your Wikipedia page and all this stuff while I'm researching you. You're like all over the place, and you have me so confused <laughs> over everything because <laughs> it'll do it to you. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> you start you start out with baseball, and you're actually drafted by the Marlins in the mid '90s. Now, the question I got to ask: Were you like in high school still at that point? What you say, say it again? Were, you were drafted by the Marlins in the mid '90s. Yes, '94, out of high okay. school, out of Louisiana. Oh, so you were out of high school. Out of high school in Louisiana, I'll tell you the quick story. Uh, drafted first round by the Marlins in '94. I was a I was a two sport uh, All American in high school baseball and football, so I had to make a decision whether to go play. And I signed with LSU or committed to LSU to play football and baseball. And uh, in the spring, I had a good enough spring to be drafted high enough to uh, to uh, have them offer me enough to want to you know, play baseball, and uh, I walked away from football. I signed a four-year, five-year no football clause and went and played with the Marlins, and I spent four years in, in baseball. I went single A, double A, triple A, was in the big leagues briefly, two or three seasons. Um, at the end of the year, I started 1998 90, opening day. In 97, I was on the, the Marlins team that won the World Series. I was a backup third baseman to uh, Bobby Bonilla at the time, and I was a part of that team with Jim Leland, and Heisinger was the owner. He, he he just he really went out and spent some money, brought a, a great team into Florida, won the World Series, and then sold the team to uh, to John Henry, who now owns the Red Sox. And so he, you know, Heisinger built a team that that didn't last. And in '98, I started opening day, and uh, I got injured in '98. Went to Triple uh, A at the end of the year. They ended up taking me off the 40-man for 99, and that's when I went back and played. Uh, I was going to be in AAA again. I went back and played college football. My brother was a receiver at LSU, and growing up in Louisiana, that's all you think about, probably a lot like uh, Penn State in, in the state of Pennsylvania. So it was something that I always wanted to do, play quarterback in Tiger Stadium. Um, 
went there for two years. Saban came in as the head coach. I played for Nick Saban, and we won a bowl game. Um, it was up and down because the season was a, was an up and down season because he'd just gotten there, and he, you know, we really hadn't developed the culture that LSU has now. So we were trying to build something, and, and LSU did, and Saban was a big part of that, and hopefully I was a, a, a little bitty part of that. But um, ended up. Uh, after my junior year there, after two years, um, I got drafted by Seattle and, and was in the NFL for a while with, as a backup and really didn't play a lot. Backed up Tim Couch in Cleveland a few years, Hasselback was with the Raiders when Jamarcus Russell got signed there and uh, when Al Davis was still alive and Lane Kiffin was the head coach there in, in Oakland. And I uh, I got out of the league in 2007 uh, in the NFL and got into business and I actually did a lot of broadcasting in L.A., um, worked with ESPN, and I know I'm giving you the full rundown, but I did did a whole lot of different things just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself after after sports. And then this year, um, funny, funny story, I got called by Major League Baseball Network to do a reality show on the knuckleball, and the reason they wanted to do the show was because R.A. Dickey, won the Cy Young, and everybody, everyone knows who R.A. Dickey is. It's a baseball fan. He's a pitcher for the Blue Jays and was with the New York Mets last year. And There's only been a, a handful of knuckleballers to ever play the game, and Major League Baseball Network had never done a reality show, and they figured it would be fun to bring on some former quarterbacks to uh, try and throw the knuckleball in a reality show competition, much like the big break um, was uh, for the Golf Channel. And they were just going to do it with the knuckleball, and it was an experiment type thing. But it, it uh, you know, they were able to bring some guys in, and we all competed in this knuckleball show at Old Dodger Town in Vero Beach, Florida. And uh, I was able to win the show, and there were some guys on there like Doug Flutie and David Green, who'd played in the NFL a long time, that had competed in the show and uh, were baseball, you know, love baseball. So it was a fun deal. I won the show, and then I got signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks to. Uh, from the show, I think I did well enough that I got some attention coming my way that I was throwing hard enough and threw a decent enough knuckleball to go to camp. And so I spent the last month and a half in spring training in in Scottsdale with the Arizona Diamondbacks, trying to make the, trying to uh, I guess become a better knuckleball pitcher. <laughs> so that's kind of the story uh, in a nutshell. Now, okay, that you that cleared up from because I I couldn't figure out like. You were drafted in '94 by the Marlins, and then there was a seven-year span because then you were playing college football. And I was like, "How did that happen? Like, how was he pro baseball, and then he was playing college football?" I was completely confused by yeah. that whole situation. You can you can do that. You can change sports. You couldn't. You can't go back and play college baseball after playing professional baseball, but you can switch sports and go uh, to a university and play. So that's how that happened. Uh, now, now, you know, most most people don't get to play, you know, in one league, but you got to play in two. So that that's just amazing in itself. But, uh, you know, it, when I heard the concept of the show, I said, you know, this this is kind of interesting because a quarterback can throw. So why shouldn't he be able to throw a baseball? Which is, um, if anybody knows anything about uh, Kaepernick, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was a pitcher. And, yep. you know, he turned into – you know, a heck of a quarterback this year. So, I, to me, it makes sense that a guy who could throw a football could also throw a baseball. Yeah, Wakefield, Tim Wakefield was a co-host of the show. And, um, you know, he was a knuckleballer for the Red Sox for a long time and spent, I think, a, like a better part of 17, 18 years in the major leagues as a knuckleball pitcher. And uh, he's been out of the game for about a year or two. And, and he was the one that really came up with the idea to bring in uh, – former football players or quarterbacks because of the the short arm motion that a quarterback has to have and a knuckleballer has to have the same thing. It's not a it's not a rare back and throw as hard as you can. It's a finesse pitch. It's it's kind of its own niche. And uh you know, he felt like quarterbacks would be the best at that outside of a baseball player um that had, you know, practiced throwing it. So he, you know, out of all the sports, I think you're right. Football and quarterbacking is probably the closest thing to being a pitcher or a knuckleball pitcher, and that's how it happened, and that's how it all came about. It was a, it was a fun deal. Now, the 
for, for for our fans who don't understand, I mean, I'm a baseball fan, I'm a pitching fan. You, you want to just give them a, a kind of an explanation on why the knuckleball is such a a difficult pitch, <laughs> well, and there's not too many guys that can actually throw a really good one. Yeah, you know, every knuckleballer has a has a crazy story. Anybody that's ever thrown the knuckleball in the big league at the big league level, it's always been because been because um you know they've they're, they hurt their arm, they've come back from an injury, or they were the third baseman that was drafted high, and now they, you know, they can't hit or something happened, and, and uh, you know, they picked it up maybe throwing in the outfield, shagging fly balls, and someone saw them and said, man, you, you can you can throw this thing. And, and there's a lot of uh, traditional or conventional pitchers that end up being knuckleballers or trying to throw it at the end of their career because maybe they can hang on a couple more years because they figured it out or something, and so there's only been a handful of guys to ever do it. So it's kind of this weird uh, phenomena thing that no one knows how to even coach it. You know, even in Arizona, uh, I, ha- I was lucky to have Tom Candiotti there, who was actually a knuckleball pitcher for the Indians and the Dodgers for a long time. And he uh, he was able to work with me some, and he's a part of their um, – he's, he's the voice of the Diamondbacks on the radio there. So he was on staff, but not really on staff, but – he was able to work with me, but most teams don't have a guy like that available to them, and I think that's why Arizona took some interest in me. Um, most of these teams would not know how to coach up a, a knuckleball, um, you know, if if they had a player come to camp. And so, you know, it's it's very rare to, to – to, there's only been seven guys in the history of baseball throw knuckleballs. So, you know, and then R.A. Dickey was the first to ever win a Cy Young. And, um, and uh, you know, so everybody kind of – Everybody wants to know more about it right now because of his success, and so it was. It was obvious that a show, um, a show like this, was going to be was going.